So as promised, uh, I'd bring it in to show the features and how things work on this, uh, now that we have five hours on her. We spent the day scraping the paint off. It's kind of funny, you buy a new car, you always worry about your first scratch. Buy a tractor, you're kind of looking forward to it. So we spent the day um, doing the driveway, and I have some footage I'm going to play at the end showing you what we did. Uh, I didn't do any... We've never used a front end loader or a, a box blade, so I didn't record it because I figured we're doing it probably wrong. <laughs> and someone would tell me I'm doing it wrong. So, but uh, we did a little brush hogging. I got some video of that. I'll play at the end. Um, and after brush hogging, it's, dry, it's been dry here for a couple weeks. This thing was covered in, in uh, seed and chaff, so we hosed it down. Yeah, it's a new tractor. You want it to look nice still. But uh, it's got five hours on her now. It went through a regen cycle. This is our first diesel, and it's a tier four, which means every four hours, or whenever the tractor figures out it needs it, it'll go through a, a, a regen cycle. And I'll show you how that, uh, what it does. Open up the hood. On the bottom of the hood release. Nice hydraulics. So on the back is that big chrome canister. What that is, is uh, the uh, emission system for this tractor. And, uh, the, you know, used to drive a diesel car, diesel tractor, you get black puffs of smoke. That captures that black smoke. And then every four hours, it runs at a high temperature and burns off the soot. So, yeah, we went through our first regen. Um, so on the front here, it's nice and accessible. The uh, air cleaner's up front. Got a battery down at the bottom, the fuses are all right there. Uh, this was not full, but this is a pre-filter for the radiator. You clean that off. What really filled up was the grill on the uh, front of the tractor was filled. But it never got hot, um, even during the regen cycle. It never seemed to overheat, so that's good. Um, this four-wheel drive tractor. It's got fairly heavy-duty axles on the front, you know, for the side of the tractor. Compared to the 3037 model, they're way beefier. Um, power steering, which you know, is awesome. Um, you know, step to get up into the uh, uh, operator area. We have the non-hydrostatic model, so it's kind of like an older tractor in that you have gears. And there's a lot of levers. If you look around here, it's, it can get confusing when you're working. Because you have four ranges of gears right here, and then on the other side you have your four gears. So you have 16 total gears, and then this lever here takes you into uh, forward and reverse. So you have 16 forward, 16 reverse, 32 total gears. Um, it's a lot. On the right hand side is a throttle, the red knob on the right, or in the middle of the frame here. And on the bottom step, the other red foot pedal is uh, a throttle as well, basically give you extra power. Got two brakes on the one side. Uh, from the from this angle here, you can see the PTO engage, which is the yellow knob. You have hazard lights, horn, headlights, um, PTO, auto, and manual. Uh, auto, one of them turns it off when the clutch is pushed, and one of them doesn't. I can't remember which is which off the top of my head right now. Um, the f I push this button here. I don't know what it does. It says beacon. I don't know what the beacon's supposed to do. Um, I looked for any lights that were blinking. I didn't see it. So I don't know what that does. Turn signals, headlights, um, all that's right here. On the right hand side here is the regen system buttons um, for disabling the system. If you want it to, you know, if you're going to shut it down, you want it to stop, you can do that. Um, gauge cluster, it's got uh, hour meter in the middle of that digital area. Let's turn the power on. And. You see we have exactly five hours. Maybe you can see, I don't know how much the glare is. Um, and then uh, temperature gauge, fuel gauge, and uh, RPM. And a number of other lights that come on and off. Um, this tractor has warnings like crazy. It beeps at you if you do something wrong. So if you try to start it and you're not in the correct configuration of uh, having your foot on the clutch or something like that. Um, if you try to... Uh, if you put it in gear and the parking brake is still on, it beeps at you. It beeps at you a lot. <laughs> um, 
So that's what we have to get used to. Uh, when it beeps, we have to figure out what we're doing wrong. Um, uh, right over here is four wheel drive. I turn it on and off. Um, on the left hand side, there's another pedal over there and that is to lock the rear end together uh, so that uh, if one wheel is slipping, you can get it going. To do that, you should stop the wheels from rotating and then engage. Uh, fuel tank is down below and uh, that's nice. You don't have to go up on top of the hood like our older tractors and pour fuel in. It's a convenient level. The front end loader actually does come off entirely. You can kind of see here where it fits into a slot. Uh, we probably won't take it off, but the bucket is designed to be skid steer uh, adaptable. Um, so we can pull these two levers and pop this off and then put a skid steer attachment on, which is kind of cool. You know, so getting pallet forks is the one accessory we're you know, looking at. Um, yeah. This is the lift capacity was 2,500 pounds, and they and they all measure them at the pins, which I assume means right here. So, uh, you know, none of them actually lift their lift capacity. I've heard around 16 or 1,800 pounds by the time you're out at the edge. We had the bucket full of dirt and it had no problem with that, and was able to curl and lift and all that type of stuff. Uh, I don't know how much a bucket full of dirt weighs though. So. so down this side, you have the quick disconnects for the, uh, for the loader. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people who were, you know, if one of the first places a hydraulic system will leak is the quick disconnects. And some people will replace those with hard connections if they're never going to take it off. Um, you have two brakes on the one side. Uh, we lock them together. We've always locked them together. So the seat is adjustable front and back. And for weight, I've got a seat belt. Um, the three point hitch level is right here, and this is for draft control for running an implement that uh, you want to maintain one level. These two levers down below are for the two rear, uh, two rear hydraulic uh, fittings. So this is our old brush hog, um, very old, and I need to do some welding on it. It's got a number of holes, um, and we haven't used it in probably five years. So. We had to uh, reverse the pins because of the clearance with this, uh, with the arms, was going to hit right here. So I had to reverse the pins, um, which was fun because those pins hadn't ever been touched and they were seized on pretty good. Uh, you can adjust the height on the one side, uh, the one arm right here, and twist and push it in to adjust. And we might put a hydraulic one on so that we can do that from with the uh, set of rear hydraulics here. The other place people tend to use them is uh, hydraulic top link. I don't know if we'll do that one. We can tend to get the height right from the get-go, but if you're doing the driveway work and you want to bank it, it's nice to be able to lift up on one arm or down on one arm. Um, the uh, three-point hitch is telescoping, so when you're setting it up, you can push these in, pull them out, get everything lined up, and then just back up and lock them in place. The, uh, it's got sway bar, anti-sway bar links in the back, so it keeps it from swaying side to side. And uh, what else? We got lots and lots of lights, uh, trailer hookup, oh sorry about that, trailer hookup right here, toolkit which comes with nothing. Um, and I believe they give you this space here to put the manuals in. We had the manuals on the porch because we were reading them. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good overview, I think, of all the features. It's a 40 horsepower, about 33 at the PTO. Um, and this thing, we when we bought it, we did the, uh, we got the tractor, the loader, uh, the, the box scraper, and the tires loaded, and the first maintenance done as part of the package. And uh, we were around $24,000. People have already asked. I figured I'll just toss it out there. Um, and that was delivered to the driveway. They did take their time getting it delivered. And we're supposed to be here at 10 in the morning. They didn't get here until 3.30 in the afternoon. So they're kind of like the cable delivery man. man. But they were here. And uh, they gave us the once over. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll finish up the video with some brush hogging from across the road. I would have done the 
you know, we did, the, the driveway wasn't so bad to do. Um, we, uh, I was running it in a really low creeper gear. It would have been a really boring video. Um, I probably could have gone in a faster one, but we didn't know what we were doing. We haven't dressed this driveway ever, so it was good to get done. There's probably about four to six inches of gravel on there, and there was grass growing everywhere. Um, except for on the left here, where I went too far and there was no grass there, so... Yeah, oops. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's like I said, an LS XR 4040. Um, yeah, it's our first new tractor, so we're still kind of figuring things out. Our newest tractor beforehand was my wheel horse, which is a 73. Um, the International was a 63, and then our 8N uh, is a 48, I believe. And we started that up today, but the uh, I said, well, old, old tractor's been a long time fixing them, and uh, that one has a bad solenoid on the starter. So we pull started it and got it running. Um, but we, we were going to use it to run the middle buster, we decided not to, because uh, if we stalled it out, then we'd have to start it up again. It would be a big pain in the neck. So, we'll get a new solenoid next week. They're 10 bucks. Put it in. It's not hard. So, if you have any questions, um, yeah, I may or may not be able to answer them. But, uh, yeah, this is, you know, for us, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling to have a tractor that works. I said I'll finish it up with some brush hogging. So today has been all about this tractor. We're going across the street to the brush hog. We've had that brush hog for years and we couldn't use it on the International just because we needed a new shaft and we never got one so we just use the finish mower all the time. So I'm letting him run ahead. We're going to do the area across the road. But you can see this driveway is nice and clear. We used that uh, box blade. And I would have recorded it, but we've never used the box blade and I didn't feel like getting criticism from uh, experts. Um, yeah, everyone who's got more than 15 minutes on one of those is an expert. So we also made this parking spot, which we've had for years, but we used it for uh, loading dirt. And we... Um, Took that, what was left of the pile, smoothed it out, and added a parking spot that's used for hunting season, and maintained at the bottom here the drainage so that the, everything drains. And then we also put our little turnaround back in. Um, the, uh, we got the box plate off. That thing weighs a ton. Um, then we went and uh, took a look at this. Uh, the uh, brush hog and it um, we had to reverse the pins to the inside because uh, there wasn't clearance for the eyelets on the outside so the village or the county or somebody's gonna be doing some uh, paving their pavers are in our field over here and their rollers are next on the other side we should uh, we should borrow the rollers do a little bit of uh, smoothing. We did some other driveway work in the back, but uh, normally we maintain this area across the road a little bit. Where we don't, we own this, but it is flood control, so we can't do a lot over here. But we got permission to brush hog years ago, so. We just brush hog a path down here so that we can ride the ATVs through it. Um, technically it says no motorized vehicles. They seem to uh, ignore our use of motorized vehicles. So We've got four hours just doing a regen right now, which is our first diesel and it's a tier four diesel. And uh, here, please look at this thing. It's a tier 4 diesel, which every four hours it goes into a regen cycle. And basically it has to run for 40 minutes. So we figure if it's going to have to run, we might as well use it and we'll do some brush hogging. Because um, we haven't mowed this at all, so before we get the finish mower in here, we need to knock it down.
This area is great for ATVs because of the banks they put in. It uh, gives us plenty of area to uh, to jump things. Let me get to the bottom where he'll be putting the paths in. But we usually basically maintain from here over to the tree line so we have a path down to the uh, the bottom. But you can kind of get a lay of the land here and see the flood control mechanism. The way it works is the dam right here. You can see the overflow tower in the middle and this is a spillway that goes around the dam so it's never compromised. So right now he's running at 2400 RPM so that he has 5400 RPM at the uh, PTO. For most of the work today we've probably been running around 1500 to 2000 RPM and uh, you know we scratched the paint up on the uh, on the bucket today and like I said I would have videotaped it but we don't we're not we have no experience at this and I really didn't feel like everyone criticized our you know, lack of bucket finesse. Yeah, we had no experience with using uh, a loader, no experience with using uh, the uh, the blade. The, uh... And I know the wraps should be up, so someone's going to say something about that. But just for that reason right there, when he goes to the trees, it kind of gets in the way. So, we got it down. I'm positive somebody will say it's unsafe. It's the first tractor that had a wraps at all. And we're still here. So, we're going to switch out and I'm going to do this for a while. And uh, I just figured I'd give you a little bit of video of it actually in use. Uh, when we get some more, I'm not going to do this every week, obviously, it'll get pretty boring. But it's a new toy for us, so we're going to spend a lot of time playing with it for the next couple weeks. So, yeah, when we do something interesting, if we get the back blade out and do some more back blade work, because we got more trail work to do, I will, uh, I'll bring you guys along. And if we uh, do more earth moving, we got a gravel area we need to redevelop that got trees growing up in it so we're going to cut the trees out and then uh, it's gravelly so we should be able to get the trees out of the gravel but uh, you know, we, we, we have a lot of projects for this tractor and then we'll get the the PTO wood chipper coming soon and you'll get to see that so until next time thanks for watching <laughs>